Welcome to all our CAT students who are trying to do their CAT PAT and in this video we're looking at some tips and ideas that can help you with the formula part of your Excel which is a part of your phase two. So you should have your spreadsheets all looking nice and pretty, you should have all the data already in there but how do we get the marks for all the formulas that we require and that's what we're going to look at now. Well here is the rubric for the 2022 pat and obviously you must always double check them just in case there are changes but it's been quite uh, similar throughout the last few years so let's have a look there are four levels that we need to hit um, so we need to make sure that we've got a formula for each of these levels and we need to do it in such a way that we can also we might have to do multiple ones of each of the levels just to ensure that we've got data and information that we can use when we are looking at our uh, charts that we want to do later on so we want to we don't want to limit our ability to do the chart so we want to make sure that we use these formulas wisely so level one will be simple sum max min the ones that stick out to me particularly the max the min the average and the mode those are the ones I like and um, those are quite easy to do if you've got uh, values or numbers in your spreadsheet which we do level two is lots of options but I like particularly the the, the count if the count is what uh, I can I can use I can count how many people said something I can do that that's quite easy um, level three I like the count ifs those ones are quite nice to do but we also can do some date and time functions because we have a birth date which we can use date and time functions and then this one's quite difficult to do the level for the lookup or nested if that's normally quite challenging but there is a way that we can do it so let's get into it so here is our spreadsheet from the previous videos that we were doing. We've got it all nicely laid out. We've got some nice conditional formatting. Um, we did the external data. So let, how do we get some of those fo those formulas that we want to get? Now, I'm going to do my summaries here at the bottom. So we're going to just do them. But obviously, you can make them look nice and um, according to your theme and your color scheme. So make sure that you use that. So for this question over here, question four and five, they had to give a scale from one to five. Now those ones are nice to work out, which was the most commonly answered question. That's the mode. Um, what was the average answer for those questions? That could be the average you can find. If there's, if everyone took a one to five, maybe not, no one took a one. So you'll find the minimum was a two. Um, I, I can already see that it does go from one to five. So the mode, average, min and max are quite nice summaries for your numerical value so that equals to the mode of this particular range let's go select that range almost put the bracket first boom and, oh, no. let's do that properly equals mode open bracket and then select the cells that you want to do the mode of so i want up until there boom and there's my mode that is done so four was the most commonly answered or option for question four and I'm just going to drag that across and it'll automatically do that for question five so five was also that and then you can find the average of that range like that and you can find the min of that same range and finding the max of that range so you can find what the biggest number that was given what's the smallest number. now if it is a range from one to five and everyone did pick from one to five it's not going to give us much information um so you might not want to use the min and max but at least you're using the mode and the average so you're getting that information so there we go we got that data i'm just going to center it um, so that we can see it so there you can see the most commonly answered option for both of them was a four uh, but you can see the average is significantly higher uh, for the question five compared to question four so you could talk about that if you wanted to and um, this one we had a numerical field for this one that could also be with that they type in a number field a number value that one's going to be even better to work out the average the min and the max that would be even a nicer one there so obviously you can do something like that and you can make this look nice and pretty um make it follow your your theme and then you can get those marks so there we go it looks a little bit better now let's go to our level Two, and the, where we found our count ifs would be very useful so if i come down here if i look at question one if we look at question one we can see that lots of people entered yes or no um this would be another example of do you can count how many people say yes no maybe um, we will count how many people say yes or no in that there's there are four different options you can count how many people said one to three or not or three to six or seven you, you can count that if you want you can count how many people came from the different cities if that's going to be useful to you remember the the data that you 
these formulas for must be useful that you can talk about that's related to your topic and your focus question. So in this case, it's quite easy, equals count if, and I'm going to select the range that I want to look for. So what you can do, especially if you've got lots of options, there's a little tip for you. If you're doing lots of options, so I'm going to press F4 now to make sure that it always sticks with those particular or that particular range, comma, and instead of me type in, in the word yes, I'm just going to click on that cell and then close bracket. Now what that does is because I've done the absolute cell referencing on that range and because I refer to that cell, what's nice is I don't have to redo that formula. I can just drag it down and it will work accordingly. Now it wasn't a big deal with two of them, but if you had, for example, this scenario, if you wrote down naught times, uh, one, two, three times, as long as you make these exactly the same as what they are over there, then that would work when you copy them down. So that's a nice way to say there were 14 yeses and six noes for question one. And you could use the yes, noes and maybes for question two. Another thing, if you have this scenario where you allow them to tick a block where they can choose multiple options and the data comes out like this, I want to find out how many people said red, yellow or blue. Um, you can use the count if for that as well. And you're going to say equals count if. And we want that range. But because the we, we want to, in this case, we want to count how many people said red. Now, red is sometimes with other stuff. So what we're going to do for our formula, if you look at our formula, we're going to put in a double or in the in the double quotes of what we're looking for. We want to look for red, but that will only give us if I look there, it'll only give us the red where it's red by itself now what happens if i want to find red in in between then i'll just put those star a star on either side of the red remember the wild cards and that will give me are oh, the 11 reds there because there are possibilities that red was somewhere in between all of that stuff and then you can do the same for star yellow star and star blue star so you can do that for your count ifs or count if sorry so there we go i made it look a little bit pretty and that's going to be our count ifs and or count if and that's going to be for our level two now level three is count ifs is a nice option for that so that's ideally when you've got two criteria so you need to look at your data and what I, what ideally do you want to combine together now so like if i if i combine city with for example question let's say question one because i want to find out what they did so yes and no that's a yes and no question and i've got the different cities i can do that so how many people in bloemfontein said yes how many in bloemfontein said no so i want both those options it actually looks something like a table so you've got all the options down of one and all the options of the other now this is a very nice thing to do a chart this data because it's it makes a nice bar chart you can see the different options so this is very nice if you if it makes sense so maybe this won't make sense in your scenario but maybe you want to count how many people said yes for question one but gave a one and then yes and a two and three and all the no's for that those combinations so those are the things that you need to obviously look at your data and see what combinations go well together and, and will give you insight into what you are looking to find out. So obviously that depends on your topic and, and depends on the questions that you've got. So let's do that for this. So there is going to be, this is going to be for question one. So I'm just going to merge this so I can see this is question one. Okay, so that's great. So now let's go. So equals, so we're going to go equals count ifs. Now, now because it's a table, we can do this, make this our life a little bit easier. I'm going to say count ifs, open bracket, now the first range we're looking at. So the first range, I'm going to look at the city in this case. Do, 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 there you go. And I'm going to press F4 right now to lock it because I want to be able to copy it down. But if I copy it down, I don't want that, for, that to change at all. There, there we go. And then I'm going to put a comma and then I'm going to put this particular block and i'm not going to put f4 on there because i want that to copy down when i refer, when i go down with that okay so then i'm going to press comma again so i'm looking for a c40 inside that range my next range is i'm looking at question one for the yes and the no so i'm going to come up here to the yes and the no and select all those options okay i'm going to press f4 again and in that purple block i'm going to look for comma the yes which is in that block over there if you're not sure what i'm doing then don't worry about the dollar signs just in, in the c4 just actually refer to the actual values but it's normally a good idea to do something like this it makes your life a little bit easier so this will tell me that five people in abeja said yes 
And if I copy that formula down, it doesn't work. Why does it not work? Ah, Mr. Long, we don't want this yes to copy down. So if I click on that, you'll see that the yes actually moved down. No, 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 that's not what I want. So I want that D39. I want that to stay there at number 39. I don't ever want it to move to 40. So I'm going to lock the 49 by putting a dollar there. And if that should fix that problem. Boom, boom. There we go. That makes a little bit, that makes a bit more sense. Now I can't copy it across because if I copy it across, it's also going to give me a problem. And the reason for that is because the city moves across. So in this case, I actually don't want the city to move from C to D. So when I'm over here, that C40, I'm going to block the C so it stays at C. Again, it does not make any sense to you. Rather, just make sure that you get the form is working and make sure that you are um, copying them down correctly. And just, just instead of using the C40 and the D39, actually use the values. You can do that as well. Obviously, this is a little bit more higher end that you can do. So there we go. I've got my little table that you can use. As I said, if you don't like doing it that way, then rather just refer to the actual values. So that must be actually in double quotes. And make sure that you spell it correctly. And then that D39 must be a yes. There we go. So there we go, it'll work. But then you'll need to do that for each and every one, change the right value and so on. So you can do it like that. So that's a nice way to do a count ifs. There's another one that you can do if you want to do a count ifs. So question four and question one. So look at question four and question one. We want to see how many people said yes, but also said one, two, three, four. So that's also a nice little one here. So again, equals count ifs. And we are looking, let's look for a one. That's where we're looking for that. We're looking for that in question four. So I'm going to select question four. And comma, what are we looking for in that case? We are looking for the one. And then I'm looking in question one. In question one, in this block, we're looking for a yes. So comma, now I'm going to type in the word yes, or you can refer to that block. And to do the, the, you put the dollar signs, dollar signs around the ranges, definitely down the ranges, because those will definitely not change. And this red block, we want the red block to go down. So the number will change, but the letter will not. So we do not want that C to change. So I'll put a dollar in front of the C. And when it comes to that green block, that green block, I want it to change from D to E, but I don't want the number to change. So I will put a dollar in front of the, the number. So that way it should be able to be copied down correctly. There we go. Okay, so we're getting our numbers. Now obviously again, make it look nice and pretty. And this is going to be quite nice to do charts on. This is quite nice stuff to do charts. You could do stuff on like that, but this can give you a lot of insights and stuff that you can talk about. Another way to get the level three question um, or marks is to look at date functions. Now, because we've got a birth date, what you could do, which is quite nice, is I can actually come here to this area. I'm just going to insert some cells here. I'm going to shift all of this text to the right. So shift it to the right. And you can use what, what's called, like we can put an age column in here. And the formula for that will equal, well, the, the age will be today's date minus the date that they were born, right? Now, remember, I'll just put, this double, just put brackets around the today. There we go. So there we go. So that will be the number of days. Now, if I make that into a number, you'll see it's in a date format. Let's make it into a number. It changes it to a very big number. Now, I don't think they're 6,200. Now, that's how many days they've been alive. So we want to take that value. And we want to divide it by how many days are there in year? 365 days in the year. So there are 17. And if you want to, you can actually add a round function in here to get some nice to say, hey, I've even got a round in here, round, comma, zero. So you could add some sort of formula to work out the age. So it's the today's date minus their birth date. And then you round, divide it by 365. Make sure you use brackets around first the, the, the minus so that, that that happens first, then the dividing by 365 and then rounding it. And then I can copy that formula down, obviously. So there's my formula for the H. 
And then that could be quite useful. You could try to find what the average age is of the people that responded to your survey. Um, you could find out what all the 15 year olds, if they said yes, or all the 16 year olds or the 18 year olds said differently. So you could find out if there's a correlation between age and people's views on certain questions. So that's not a bad thing to do. And there you've got some nice age calculations in there too. So that's also good for your level three. Now the last example is going to be how do we get a level four? That's a long, that's a, that's a V lookup or a H lookup or a, a nested F. How do we do that? Well, there's lots of ways that you could potentially do it. Um, what I like to do is I like to say these questions where you've got to range from one to five. You normally have a scale of what a one means and a two and a three and a four and a five means. So what you could do, what I like to do is I like to have that scale written down. So, oh, there I've written it down. So let's pretend, let's pretend that question four um, or question five, the one was a none, a two was a not like. So I've got a nice little scale here of what a one to five means. Okay, so there we go. So what I can do, there's two ways that I like to use this. One is to look over here. The mode, this was the most, the four was the most commonly asked question. So what was a four? I can't remember what a four was. So over here is a place where you could say, well, let's take that four and look in this table to find out what the actual value was that the users were selecting. They were selecting, it was likely, so that we understand what that numerical form means. So you could use equals a V lookup. We're looking up the mode, the most commonly used value in this table. Boom, boom, boom. Not that table, this table. Don't want to, don't select that extra cell. Uh, two few arguments. Let's redo that. Let's try that again because my computer is going a bit funny here. So we're going to first of all go do that value again. That value, comma. Now we want this table. There we go. That's better. I think I forgot to put a comma. That's why. Comma. And it's in alphabetical it's in alphabetical order or numerical order from ascend so i don't need to worry about anything else i can just put get the value from column two please and that should be enough so it will say hey a four was most likely and if i had to change the data in question five it will probably go a hey, it's now actually it's got, the mode has gone to a five which is a most like or highly likely so you could do something like that another thing that you could do if you wanted to maybe you wanted to put in what each of these users put in so some people might want to put hey i'm going to put in what they selected so i'm going to insert another uh, cell move everything to the right and i want to say what that meant for equals a v lookup for this particular cell we are looking it up inside of this table now in this case we must use dollar signs and that because we're going to be copying that formula down but we want the, that table that we're referring to to always stay there and we are always looking at the second columns value so if i do that then i can see what that three what those numerical values mean for the different options that they selected so and then you can say well this is a combined question five option so you can see there question five people selected this and this is what it meant or you could just hide that particular column if you wanted to you just want to have those values so there you can have a v lookup so those are the options that are available to you if you want to do some sort of v lookup and that okay so there we go that's how you do your formulas um, our next video we'll look at how we can look at charts for our pet for more videos for your cat pet, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and go to the playlist. There you'll find all the topics that you need for cat. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.